Hello and welcome to German Cooking. This is the first session of several that will follow where I will explain to you how to bake a classic German bread. So it's a bread baking class. Part 1. I often get asked where do you get your sourdough from? And I always answer I made my own. And this is what I will show you today, how you start your own sourdough. This is the result after or on day one. It's a process that takes four to five days until you can start using it. And I will show you how to make this. And today I show you, without sourdough, how to break bake these beautiful bread rolls. Okay, so let's start. In this first lesson, I will show you how to prepare a sourdough and we will bake some bread rolls as well. So, before we start, um, I would like to explain some basics to you. So I have two different kinds of flowers over here. This one is a normal plain wheat flour. And it's just yeah, a very normal type of flour. Nothing special. You get it everywhere in the supermarket. In the other bowl, I have rye flour. You see the color is a little bit darker. This rye flour over here is a very fine stone ground flour and it may be hard for you to get this. If you don't get a fine one like this one, you can take any other and if you want to have a fine one, you have to sift it and then you can use the fine parts and keep the, the, the rest for one of the other braids we make later in, in, in this course. So bread is mainly made out of three ingredients. This is flour, water and salt. And to let the bread rise, you can either use a sourdough. You can create a sourdough out of rye flour or a sourdough out of wheat flour. Or you can take yeast. When you use a sourdough, you always have to do or prepare a pre-dough that needs to rest for 16 to 24 hours before you can use it to bake something out of it. When you use yeast, you have two options. You can use or create a straight dough, as we do today, for the bread rolls. Or you can also create a pre-dough, a bigger, we call it. And this one then you can use um, as well. And then you need less yeast and let this pre-dough, the bigger, rise or ferment for 16 to 24 hours as well. Let's start with the sourdough preparation because that is really easy. All you need is 100 grams of flour okay, I'm nearly there okay 100 grams of flour and you put 100, 100 grams of water on top of it Oops, a little bit too much to more flour. It really doesn't matter um, if you take 50 gram or 100 gram or 
on 50 gram, it doesn't matter. Um, it just is important that you have half flour, half water. The same amount in gram, not in volume. So you mix this. This is a very stiff mixture. And when it is well mixed, okay, that's the case. So this now we use or we, we use for our sourdough, or this will become our sourdough, we keep it aside and let it rest for 24 hours at least, and um, then we continue. Normal plain flour, and we take um, 990 gram of it. Nine hundred and ninety. That's a bit. Okay. Seven hundred and eighty. Nearly there. Hmm. Okay. Good. Okay, on, then we put in there 16 grams of salt. And that is another basic thing. On a kilo of flour, you take something between 15 and 18 grams of salt. So we take 16 over here, 16 grams of salt, 14, it is important that you have a scale that allows you to be precise with the amount. Next thing we take is yeast and I have instant yeast over here. Instant yeast is, has a very fine structure and I like to like this kind of yeast more than the dry yeast because the dry yeast you have to dissolve in, in liquid before you can use it. This one, the instant one, you just put into your flour, done. So we need around about 10 grams, and that is a lot. But as I said, this will be a straight dough, so we need more yeast. You would have done a pre-dough out of a little bit of flour and a little bit of yeast and a little bit of water. Then we would not need that much of yeast. So, if, if you in if you want to use that dough directly and don't let it rest overnight in the fridge, what you can do, then you need to put some sugar in. This allows the yeast to be activated faster and to react faster. So it's like a kickstart for the dough. Um, in this case, I don't put sugar in. So I leave the sugar out. 
you can use instead of sugar you can use a little bit of honey or anything else uh, that that gives the yeast some food to to start with, with the fermentation the next thing we need to put in is water and in this recipe we need 610 gram of water Next thing is to mix it. And with the mixing, you there are some things you have to keep in mind as well. Start with a low speed. So three minutes on a low speed and after that we have to mix it for around about 10 minutes at a higher speed. Okay, it's now mixed for a few minutes. You see, yeah, the water and the flour are combined, but it's not really a soft dough. There are some pieces which are a little bit yeah, dry and one which are a little bit... So, next step is to mix it for 10 minutes. And we do that to develop gluten in, in our dough. The gluten helps to combine everything better and, and to have have a better structure and to make the dough more elastic and, and, and so on. So that is something that is um, what we want with our bread rolls. So to do this we just mix it for yeah, around about 10 minutes on a high speed or higher speed, not um, with, this, with this machine, not the highest one, but um, quite, quite different speed. Okay, so our dough now in the machine for for around about 10 minutes and oh, it already smells very good. And you see the difference in the consistency of the dough? I will show you as well. First of all, it's really... So it also has the right consistency, of course. We look in the bowl. You see, our bowl is nearly clean, and that's an indication that the flour and the water is incorporated um, very well, and that dough has a right consistency. I cover that, put that now in the fridge, and. After around about an hour, I will have a look, and the dough then should have, yeah, developed a little bit and be not re not really double the size, but um, should have developed a little bit. And then I just fold it, and folding of bread dough means pretty much take the dough, and then you just Fold it together, okay, like this. Yeah, 
and then you let rest it again. Yeah? And that's in, in an hour's time what I do. And then I put it in the fridge again and let it rest for the rest of the night until tomorrow morning. Our dough had been in the fridge overnight. It's now looking like this. So this is, it has risen and it has built some small bubbles. And here you can see those. And it is still a very soft con condition. And what we do, we get it out now. clean and leave it there scale we now divide our dough in our rolls and for this I have a tool like this that you can use a knife and the scale and um, you remember we had 990 gram of flour and 610 gram of water, which is 1,600 grams. And um, so I do 100, 100 gram rolls. Uh, it's a bit large, but um, um, it's okay. And um, so we should get 16 out of that. So I now try to... Get hand cream. This don't need to be hundred percent exact, but so But um, okay. It's done, so we have our rolls over here. One, two, three, four, five, fifteen, sixteen. <clears throat> okay, now we have to, to shape them, and um, there are several methods. I show you one of the easiest ones is um, you can shape them like this, just cut them apart and then just fold them and fold them and fold them and fold them and do this. <clears throat> or you just roll the dough on the surface and then you close your hand and you get it. A roll as well, but it needs a little bit more. Show you. So it should have a closed surface like this one. Yeah. So this is not ideal. Or well, you can roll them like this and And you get a surface over here as well. So there are different methods, it doesn't matter. So we have our rolls over here and now I shape them to the final form. You can do the different, several different possibilities. What I do is I just fold them like this, give them a little roll, so it will look like that now. Yeah. So we have a seam over here and we now need to let them rest so that they can rise and we put the seam to the bottom. In the oven will be up but now for resting we put them on the bottom and over here I have a piece of linen. Show you. 
I have a huge piece of linen over here and we put them on the linen. It's a thick linen over here. You can buy some baker linen. This is just very thick organic um, cotton and we put them on here, our little rolls, and let them rest then over the week. So, when you form or do make this form, you have to look at your dough, at your pre shaped dough. So, when you look at this, it has a seam down here, and when we fold them, this needs to be inside. And then shape it like this and put it in here. So this was the last roll. So we have our rolls over here. What we do is just cover them now and let them rest. And in the meantime, while they rest, I'll show you how to prepare the oven. So the next important thing to do is to set up the oven correctly. You may think, ah, oh, yeah, I switch on my oven and then um, I put my rolls in and it will be good. But um, that's not the case. First of all, you need to understand that every oven is different. Even if you have the same model, each oven has its own behaviors. My one over here has a um, hot spot in the back over there, <coughs> the right corner. And when you when you bake something, you, you need to be aware of. So when I put rolls in, the rolls in the back over there, they will be always a little bit darker, which is okay when you know it. So, a professional oven usually has a, um, a system to put steam in, um, and we need steam at the beginning of the baking process. At home, you don't have that in a normal oven. So, what I have over here is an iron pan that I put beneath or at the bottom of the oven. <clears throat> so that will heat up and I put water in there um, when I put the rolls in. I don't put that at the very bottom <clears throat> because then you break your oven if you do that. So put it on the lowest level and directly above that, I have a stone. <coughs> That's a normal pizza stone you can buy and you can put in your oven. And that is very important. If you want to have good results with your bread baking, you need a stone. And above the stone, I have a baking tray with some holes in it can see that over there and I put half of the rolls on this baking tray the other half on the stone and I bake them at the same time and um, that's our oven set up and um, I'll take this out and all the rest we need to keep in and heat up to 200 250 degrees so I put 250 degrees now, and when I put the rolls in, the temperature will drop, and I will reduce the temperature uh, then right away. So 250 degrees, and that's full speed on the oven. So our rolls have rested now for 45 minutes, and nice and fluffy. Um, 
what I do now is I put eight of them on the stone and the other eight on my so we put them now upside down so that's the seam is on top of the painting tray Goes in the oven, but before we do the baking tray in the oven, we need to put the other one on the stone. So I put them like this. So I have, I have this tool over here to put it on the stone, and then we just this is going like this. Okay, the first ones are in. Are in. Now I'll check the other ones. Okay. The next one. In the front. So those are in. Now the let us go in as well. And now we put the water in the pan. So, and now we have to... They now need to bake for around about 15 to 20 minutes. I reduce the heat now to 200 degrees. So they have now 250 and it's a dropping temperature. So our bread rolls are ready. I take them out. And in the stone as well. Okay, so these are our bedrolls.